Hi viewers, welcome back. We have started a new series on aircraft maintenance engineering. In this lecture, we will be discussing about module three on electrical fundamentals, sub module five on DC sources of electricity. We will be uploading videos on each and every topic. So if you have not subscribed our channel, then please subscribe and also press the bell icon so that you never miss any updates from your channel. DC power sources and batteries. Electromotive force in an electric circuit can be produced by six different methods. Every electric circuit needs a power source. On an aircraft, the battery may be used for engine starting. But far more importantly, the battery is the source of emergency power when the generator fails. A DC power source is a device or system that provides a consistent voltage and is used to power electric circuits. The most common type of DC power source is a battery. A battery is a device consisting of one or more electrical cells that convert chemical energy into electrical energy. Every battery is basically a galvanic cell where redox reactions takes place between two electrodes which act as a source of chemical energy. The most commonly recognized DC voltage source is the electric battery, a device that uses chemical reactions to produce and receive electrons at accessible points. These points are called terminals, which are electrically conductive areas on the outside of batteries which are connected to the electrochemical cell inside the battery that produced and accept electrons. The terminal connected to the electron producing cell is called anode, that is negative terminal, while the terminal connected to the electron accepting cell is called cathode, that is the positive terminal. Batteries are represented as a circle with a positive and negative symbol indicating the positive and negative terminals. Sometimes to identify the polarity of terminals, a long thin line is used to represent the positive terminal and a short thick line to represent negative terminal. This symbol indicates a generic DC power supply of 1.5 volt. The plus symbol at the top of the source indicates that current flows out of the top side. The negative symbol at the bottom of the source indicates that current flows into the bottom side. A cell is a portable device which converts chemical energy into electrical energy. A group of interconnected cell is known as a battery. Cell operate on a principle of the exchange of charges between dissimilar metals. Construction of cell. In cells, an electrolyte separates two charge collecting materials called electrodes to which external connections are made. The electrolyte pushes electrons onto one of the plates and takes them off the other. This action results in an excess of electrons or a negative charge on one plate and a loss of electrons or a positive charge on the other plate. Electrolytes are chemical solutions manufactured to allow the generation and free movement of both types of ions and are normally acid or alkaline paste or liquids. The action of the electrolyte in carrying electrons from one plate to the other is actually a chemical reaction between the electrolyte and the two plates. This action changes chemical energy into electrical charge on the cell plates and terminals. With nothing connected to the cell terminals, the electrons would be pushed onto the negative plate until there was no more room. At the same time, the electrolyte would take electrons from the positive plate to make up for those it had pushed onto the negative plate. Both plates would then be fully charged and the movement of electrons would cease. 
if a wire were connected between the negative and positive terminal of the cell electrons on the negative terminal would leave the terminal and travel through the wire to the positive terminal the electrolyte would carry more electrons across from the positive plate to the negative plate while the electrolyte is carrying electrons you would see the negative plate being used up and you would see that bubbles of gas at the positive plate battery types batteries can be broadly divided into two major parts primary battery and secondary battery primary batteries are combination of primary cells so primary cells have high density and get discharged slowly since there is no fluid inside these cells they are also known as dry cells the internal resistance is high and the chemical reaction is irreversible its initial cost is cheap and also primary cells are easy to use whereas secondary cells have low energy density and are made of molten salts and wet salts these are wet cells the internal resistance is low and the chemical reaction is reversible enabling the cell to be reused its initial cost is high and is a little complicated to use in comparison to the primary cell the dry cell is the most common type of primary cell battery and is similar in its characteristics to that of an electrolytic cell this type of a battery is basically designed with a metal electrode or graphite rod acting as the cathode positive terminal immersed in an electrolytic paste this electrode build up is then encased in a metal container which is usually made of zinc which itself act as the anode negative terminal when the battery is in a discharge condition an electrochemical reaction takes place resulting in one of the metals being consumed because of this consumption the charging process is not reversible attempting to reverse the chemical reaction in a primary cell by way of recharging is usually dangerous and can lead to a battery explosion these batteries are commonly used to power items such as flashlights the most common primary cell today are found in alkaline batteries silver oxide and lithium batteries a secondary cell is any kind of electrolytic cell in which the electrochemical reaction that releases energy is reversible the lead acid car battery is a secondary cell battery the electrolyte is sulfuric acid the positive electrode is lead peroxide and the negative electrode is lead a typical lead acid battery consists of six lead acid cells in a case each cell produced 2 volts so the whole battery produces a total of 12 volts other commonly used secondary cell chemistry types are nickel cadmium nickel metal hydride lithium ion and lithium ion polymer lead acid batteries used in aircraft are similar to automobile batteries the lead acid batteries is made up of a series of identical cells each containing sets of positive and negative plates lead acid cells have a nominal voltage of 2 volts therefore a typical 24 volt aircraft battery would consist of 12 cells connected in series the active material in the battery anode is lead peroxide and cathode the negative plate is this spongy lead the electrolyte is dilute sulfuric acid there are two forms of lead acid battery construction conventional and solid block which is often referred to as wireless type battery in the conventional battery the plates consist of lead grids into which the active materials are pressed 
the positive and negative plates are then interleaved and connected to a lug that forms both a mechanical support and the terminal cells are generally constructed with an additional negative plate making both outside plates negative this ensures that chemical action takes place on both sides of each positive plate when chemical action only take place on one side of a positive plate it tends to a buckle the plate arrangement is then inserted into a composite material container which is fitted with a lid the inside of the container is a ribbed to provide additional support for the plates which are raised clear of the bottom of the container to prevent shortening by any sediment that forms lead acid battery testing method a acid battery hydrometer is used to determine the specific gravity of the sulfuric acid present in lead acid batteries at a certain temperature this in turn tells us the concentration of sulfuric acid in the battery lower the concentration of sulfuric acid more discharge the battery is the most commonly used hydrometer consists of a small sealed glass tube weighted at its lower end so it floats upright within the narrow stem of the tube is a paper scale with a range of 1.1 to 1.3 when a hydrometer is used a quantity of electrolyte sufficient to float the hydrometer is drawn up into the syringe the depth to which the hydrometer sinks into the electrolyte is determined by the density of the electrolyte and scale value indicated at the level of electrolyte is its specific gravity the more dense the electrolyte is the higher the hydrometer floats therefore the highest number on the scale will be 1.3 in a new fully charged aircraft storage battery the electrolyte is approximately 30% acid 70% water by volume and is 1.3 times as heavy as pure water during discharge the electrolyte becomes less dense and its specific gravity drops below 1.3 a specific gravity reading between 1.3 and 1.275 indicates a high state of charge between 1.275 and 1.240 a medium state of charge and between 1.240 and 1.2 a low state of charge is indicated aircraft batteries are generally of small capacity but are subject to heavy loads the values specified for state of charge are therefore rather high hydrometer tests are made periodically on all storage batteries installed in aircraft an aircraft battery in a low state of charge may have perhaps 50% charge remaining but is nevertheless considered low in the face of heavy demands that would soon exhaust it a battery in such a state of charge is considered in need of immediate recharging lead acid battery charging methods batteries are charged by either the constant voltage or constant current method in the constant voltage method a motor generated set with a constant regulated voltage forces the current through the battery in this method the current at the start of the process is high but automatically tapers off reaching a value of approximately 1 ampere when the battery is fully charged the constant voltage method requires less time and less supervision than constant current method in constant current method the current remains almost constant during the entire charging process this method requires a longer time to charge a battery and towards the end of the process present the danger of overcharging if care is not exercised in the aircraft the storage battery is charged by direct current from the aircraft generator system 
this method of charging is the constant voltage method since the generator voltage is held constant by the use of a voltage regulator the voltage and specific gravity figures for a lead acid batteries are when it is 100% that is fully charged and still connected to the charging board it will show 2.5 to 2.7 volts and specific gravity will be 1270 to 1280 when it is 100% fully charged and off and off charge it will show voltage reading of 2.2 to 2.5 volts and specific gravity will be 1270 to 1280 zero percent and when it is fully discharged the specific gravity will be 1150 the battery will be damaged if allowed to go below the above discharge values battery rating a lead acid cell is normally rated at approximately 2 volts a battery rated at 24 volts consists of 12 lead acid cells connected in series the most common battery rating is the ampere r rating this is a unit of measurement for battery capacity it is determined by multiplying a current flow in amperes by the time in hours the battery is being discharged a battery with a capacity of 1 ampere r should be able to continuously supply a current of 1 ampere to a load for exactly 1 hour or 2 amperes for half hour and so on before becoming completely discharged actually the ampere hour output of a particular battery depends on the rate at which it is discharged heavy discharge current heats the battery and decreases its efficiency and total ampere hour output for airplane batteries a period of 5 hours has been established as the discharge time in rating battery capacity however this time of 5 hours is only basic for rating and does not necessarily mean the length of time during which the battery is expected to furnish current under actual service conditions the battery can be completely discharged within a few minutes or it may never be discharged if the generator provides sufficient charge the ampere hour capacity of a battery depends upon its total effective plate area connecting batteries in parallel increases ampere hour capacity connecting batteries in series increases the total voltage but not the ampere hour capacity life cycle of a battery battery life cycle is defined as the number of complete charges or discharges cycles a battery can perform before its normal charge capacity falls below 80% of its initial rated capacity battery life can vary anywhere from 500 to 1300 cycles various factors can cause deterioration of battery and shorten its service life the first is over discharging which causes excess sulfation second is too rapid charging or discharging that results in overheating of the plates and shedding of active material the accumulation of shed material in turn causes shorting of the plates and this results in internal discharge a battery that remains in low or discharge condition for a longer period of time may be permanently damaged the deterioration can continue to a point where cell capacity can drop to 80% after 1000 cycles in many cases the cell can produce or continue to work to nearly 2000 cycles but with a diminished capacity of a 60% of its original state only comparison of battery life cycle lithium ion battery is most popular and it has maximum battery life of 2000 cycles nickel cadmium have 1000 battery life cycle whereas the lead acid has 500 battery life cycle nickel cadmium batteries active material in a nickel cadmium cell are nickel hydrate in the charge positive plate and sponge cadmium in the charge negative plate the electrolyte 
is a potassium hydroxide in concentration of 20 to 35 percent by weight of pure potassium hydroxide in distilled water. The typical open circuit cell voltage of nickel cadmium battery is about 1.25 volts. When a charging current is applied to a nickel cadmium battery, the negative plates lose oxygen and begin forming metallic cadmium. The active material of the positive plates, nickel hydroxide, becomes more highly oxidized. This process continues while the charging current is applied or until all the oxygen is removed from the negative plates and only cadmium remains. Toward the end of the charging cycle, the cell emits gas. This also occurs if the cells are overcharged. This gas is caused by decomposition of the water in the electrolyte into hydrogen at the negative plates and oxygen at the positive plates. The voltage used during charging as well as temperature determines when this gassing will occur. The chemical action is reversed during discharge. The positive plates slowly give up oxygen, which is regained by the negative plates. This process results in the conversion of chemical energy into electrical energy. During discharge, the plate absorbs a quantity of the electrolyte. On recharge, the level of electrolyte rises and at full charge, the electrolyte is at its highest level. Therefore, water should be added only when the battery is fully charged. The nickel cadmium battery is usually interchangeable with the lead acid type, but few precautions are required. When replacing a lead acid battery with a nickel cadmium battery, the battery compartment must be clean, dry, and free of all traces of acid from the old battery. The compartment must be washed out and neutralized with ammonia or boric acid solution, allowed to dry thoroughly and then painted with an alkali resisting varnish. General maintenance and safety precautions. For vented nickel cadmium cells, the general maintenance requirements are hydrate cells to supply water lost during overcharging, maintain intercell connectors at a proper torque values, keep cell tops and exposed sides clean and dry. Electrolyte spillage can form grounding paths. White moss around vent cap seal is potassium carbonate, cleaning up tea surfaces with distilled water and dry it. While handling the caustic potassium hydroxide electrolyte, wear safety goggles to protect the eyes. The technician should also wear plastic gloves and an apron to protect skin and clothes. In case of spillage on hands or clothes, neutralize the alkali immediately with the vinegar or dilute boric acid solution. Then rinse with clean water. During overcharging conditions, explosive mixture of hydrogen and oxygen develop in nickel cadmium cells. When this occurs, the cell relief walls vent these gases to the atmosphere creating a potentially explosive hazard. Additionally, room ventilations should be such as to prevent a hydrogen buildup in a closed spaces from exceeding 1% by volume. Explosions can occur at concentrations above 4% by volume in air. Sealed lead acid batteries. In many applications, Sealed lead acid batteries are gaining in use over flooded lead acid and nickel cadmium batteries. One leading characteristics of nickel cadmium batteries is that they perform well in low voltage, full discharge, high cycle applications. However, they do not perform as well in extended standby applications such as auxiliary or emergency battery packs used to power internal reference units or standby equipment. The sealed lead acid battery can be designed to alert the technician 
if a battery is falling. Furthermore, it may be possible to test the failure detection circuits by activating a built-in test button. Lithium ion batteries. Lithium ion batteries are the primary type of batteries for many consumer type of equipment, such as cell phones, battery power tools, and computers. But now they are also being used in commercial and military aircraft. One of the first aircraft to utilize the lithium ion battery is Boeing 787. The three primary functional components of lithium ion battery are the positive, negative electrodes, and electrolyte. The negative electrode of a conventional lithium ion cell is made from carbon. The positive electrode is a metal oxide and the electrolyte is a lithium salt in an organic solvent. The electrochemical roles of the electrode reverses between anode and cathode depending on the direction of current flow through the cell. Lithium ion batteries can be dangerous under some conditions and can pose a safety hazard since they contain, unlike other rechargeable batteries, a flammable electrolyte and are also kept pressurized. Under certain conditions, they can overheat and a fire can occur. The Boeing 787 aircraft utilizes two large 32 volt 8 cell lithium ion batteries. These batteries are much lighter and more powerful than nickel cadmium batteries used in similar sized aircraft. These batteries can produce 150 ampere for aeroplane power up. A photocell is a resistor that changes resistance depending on the amount of light incident on it. A photocell operates on semiconductor photoconductivity. The energy of photons hitting the semiconductor frees electrons to flow and reducing the resistance. So in the dark, Photonics photocell has a resistance of approximately 500 kilo ohm. And in bright light, the resistance drops to approximately 10 kilo ohm. Thank <laughs> you.